you turn your Bibles, please, to Acts chapter number 4 tonight. Acts 4, we'll begin uh, over there. Acts 4. In verse 1, starting from verse 1. The Bible says, And as they spake unto the people, the priests and the captain of the temple and the Sadducees and came upon them, being grieved that they taught the people and preached to Jesus Christ, Jesus, the resurrection from the dead. And they laid hands on them and, and put them out in hold the next day, for it was now even tied. Howbeit many of them which heard the word believed, and the number of the men was about 5,000. And it came to pass on the morrow that their rulers and the elders and the scribes and, and Annas and the high priest and Caiaphas and John and Alexander and as many as were of the kindred of the high priest were gathered together at Jerusalem. And when they had set them in the midst, they asked, By what power, or by what name have you done this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost, said unto them, Ye rulers of the people, and elders of Israel, if we this day be examined of the good deed done unto the impotent man, by what means he is made whole, be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel, that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him that this man stand before, here before you whole. And this is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which has become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled, and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. And beholding the man which was healed standing with them, they could say nothing against it. But when they had commanded them to go aside out of the council, they conferred among themselves, saying, What shall we do to these men? For that indeed a notable miracle had been done by them is manifest to all them that dwell in Jerusalem, and we cannot deny it. But it spread no further among the people. Let us straightly threaten them, that they speak henceforth to no man in his name. And they called them and commanded them not to speak at all, nor teach in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John answered and said unto them, Would it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than unto God judge ye? For we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we do thank you for today. Lord, thank you for uh, allowing us to be here tonight. And Lord, what a blessing to be uh, at Foster Our Baptist Church. And I pray for uh, this church. And Lord, I pray for everyone that's here tonight. I pray... Lord, I don't know everyone's need, and Lord, I pray that you would just uh, meet those needs tonight, and I pray that you meet with us, be with the other programs going on in the church, pray that uh, your spirit would work in each one of our hearts tonight, and I pray most of all, Lord, if there's perhaps somebody here that's still unsure of heaven, I pray that tonight, Lord, would be the night of their salvation, and we just give you praise and thanks uh, for all that you do tonight, in Jesus' name, amen. Exciting things were happening there early on in the New Testament church. Uh, right from the beginning, if you uh, would uh, have read from the beginning of, of the book of Acts, we know that the Holy Spirit came down uh, to empower the church and, and to uh, the Apostle Peter preaching a powerful message, and, and uh, many people got saved, and from there spread uh, the, ch uh, the church there in Jerusalem, and many things were, uh, lives, people's lives were being changed, and and, uh, and so it's, it's the gospel, really, the gospel is the answer to uh, our, this world, and, and, uh, and it, it changed people, and we know that people were, uh, were transformed, and, and they were serving the Lord, and, and, but it didn't take long, as we look at chapter number four, not too many chapters after that, that opposition became, uh, that, that faced opposition, and uh, uh, it didn't take long after that, and the religious establishment of the day didn't like the fact that uh, there's this new type of religion, uh, quote-unquote religion, was starting up and was drawing a lot of people towards it. And, uh, and we know that as we serve the Lord, there will be a lot of opposition. And I, I remember 
first coming to Sagada and doing a survey trip, right, even before we uh, came and lived there, and I was told that uh, what we're about to do is just impossible. And uh, I was told by a lady when I was trying to uh, witness to her, she was asking me what, what, uh, what I was doing, and, he, and I, I told her we want to start a church here someday, and she told me that's impossible, you can't do that. And you have to have some very close connection to be able to start a church here in Sagada. I said, lady, I have close connections. I, I just said that. I don't know why I said that. But, but I do know the Lord, God, when God calls, he enables. And so as we serve the Lord, and even here locally, we know that we're, we continue to do right, and we t- try to reach out to people. We know that Satan, the God of this world, will do his dead level best to stop us and to dis- discourage us. But uh, we've seen many oppositions in the Philippines, but we've also seen the power of God uh, working in the lives uh, of, uh, uh, of people. And so after the healing of the, uh, the miracle of the healing of the lame man in Acts 3, the apostles Peter and, and John were apprehended for preaching in verse 2. And the next day they were questioned. And notice in verse 7 in our text it says, And when they had set them in the midst, they asked, By what power? Or by what name have ye done this? It's interesting to note uh, that uh, they were not questioning the reality or the, uh, uh, the, the miracle because they can see the man. The, the man, the lame man that, was, that sat in, the, in that gate, everybody knew him. He had been there for many years and, and begging and asking uh, people for alms. And now all of a sudden he's a man. He's a changed man. And again, that's the power of the gospel. It changes people. And so, but it, it, they said... Uh, they, it says here uh, that uh, that's in verse 7, but, but when they had set them in the midst, they asked them by what power or by what name. Basically, uh, the word power and name carries the idea of the source of authority. They were asking them by whose name, by what authority did, did he give uh, the, 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 uh, were, uh, while you're doing this. In verse 10, it says, Peter uh, boldly spoke in verse 10. He said, Being it known unto you all, and unto all the people of Israel, that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, God, whom God had raised from the dead, even by him that this man is stand here before you whole. And obviously, the, uh, Peter, uh, being filled with the Holy Ghost, he's saying it's not about us. It is not about uh, what we could do. It's what about the Lord. It's about the Lord and what he has done. Uh, for this, the, the power of Christ has, or the name of Christ has power. And, uh, and, and you know, as we go out there and, and try to be a witness and try to influence folks for, uh, for the Lord and try to get them to church, we know that if we, we don't do it in our own power. It is the power of the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And it is the power, uh, it is the name that, uh, that, that the name of Christ has transformed the lay man and, uh, you know, and that same name has not changed. The power that we have in Christ has not changed. Many times we get, again, we get discouraged and, and when we face opposition. And, uh, but uh, I just want to encourage us today that, uh, to remember the name that we carry. We carry the name of Jesus Christ. And there's, there's power uh, behind that. And, and the Bible says in, in Matthew 28, uh, Jesus said, all power is given unto me both in heaven and earth, and, and, and then he gives us the great commission to go and preach the gospel to every creature. And, and we have a responsibility and, and a duty to reach not only the Philippines, or I, 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 you know, whenever I go to a church, I, I'm always drawn to the missions uh, uh, displays, and I'm always drawn to the, the pictures. I love looking at the pictures of missionaries and trying to find out who I know and also trying to see how exciting it is to be in a church that, that uh, believe in sending out missionaries. And, and, but you know, mission, the mission field is not just across the ocean. The mission field is right here. And we all have a, uh, our own uh, responsibilities. And, and uh, the mission field, again, it's not, across the, it's not just across the ocean. It's in, it's in the office or it's at a school or even in our neighborhoods. And, and I just want to encourage us today to remember uh, the name that we carry, the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And there's power uh, behind that. And, and I want to show you just, just three sim- simple uh, uh, truths tonight about the name of Christ and uh, how it enabled uh, the apostles and how it can enable us to go as we go out and be a witness 
uh, for the Lord Jesus Christ. Number one, if you're taking notes, it, uh, we see that the name of Christ gave them power and authority uh, to preach. In verse 10, in our text, the, the, Bible, the Bible says, uh, uh, Be it known unto you all that all the people of Israel, that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, uh, whom God have raised from the dead, even by him that this man stand before you whole. And, uh, and you know, one of the first things I then I got asked when I went to Sagada, and, and obviously it's, it's a small community, it's a, it's a tribal uh, village, very remote village, and, and it, we kind of stuck out a little bit and because we were four. I'm, I kind of blend in a little bit because I, uh, I'm Filipino, but, but my, my wife and my kids, they stood out, and so we... Uh, they, they would ask us, you know, you know, why are you here? What are you doing here? And and uh, but we we had to I had to keep on reminding myself that I'm here because God called me here. And and uh, and the Lord just uh, just uh, used that from the, from that standpoint. And and so the name of Christ gave them power and authority. And it, and again, it wasn't about the, the apostles or their abilities or uh, their their education background, but it was about the Lord Jesus Christ. And and when God calls, we must obey. And, uh, and so, number one, up to that, uh, under that, we see that the name of Christ is the central message of the gospel. Again, verse 10, uh, Peter, again, saying that uh, it was about the Lord Jesus Christ um, that, that was crucified and then God raised. And, and again, essentially, the apostle Peter uh, is saying that the, the name of Christ is the only one that can change somebody's life. Somebody's life. There have been many times in the mission field, and uh, we face a lot of uh, obviously difficult and discouragement, discouraging time, but many times the Lord had to remind me that uh, the only hope that the, the, the eager people have is the name of Jesus Christ. And there have been many times, and I'm sure you hear from other missionaries as well, that there have been many times that you feel like you're not really making a difference and, and, and that uh, you feel like kind of quitting, but... But the Lord reminds you why you're there, and, and, and really the only hope for our, the, uh, our, our world today is the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and the, the Apostle Paul recognized that the central message of the gospel is found only in the name of Christ. And he said in 2 Corinthians 4, verse 5, For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. And, uh, and Paul recognized that, and we must recognize that we have been given that same authority uh, to preach uh, the gospel. And, and yes, we need to be kind and we need to speak the truth in love and, and we always want to leave, leave an open door for the gospel. But we must never shy away from the fact that we've been given authority and we've been given uh, the, uh, the, uh, God's authority to go and, and to tell people about the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul said that we are ambassadors for Christ. An ambassador. I don't know if you ever met uh, an ambassador before, but uh, before we left for the Philippines, I met the, uh, we, we had to go to the consular office, the Philippine consular office there in Vancouver, Canada. And we were, I, I decided to get my dual citizenship uh, and that would help us along the way there in the Philippines. And, and so we met the ambassador uh, of, of the Philippines there in Canada. And it's, it was quite a, uh, quite the event, and as we were, you know, uh, sworn again, I was sworn again as a Filipino citizen. My children uh, got their, the dual citizenship as well. But you know, it's amazing when you, the ambassador really, he's there to represent a higher authority, to represent somebody else. And the Bible says that we are ambassador for Christ. And Paul, uh, two, twice in the New Testament, uh, refers to, uh, uh, says something about being a um, uh, of himself being an ambassador for Christ. And that's what we are, as just an ambassador for Christ. We're representing Christ uh, in this world. And, um, and again, Paul considered himself to be Christ's ambassador and, and, uh, and an ambassador, someone that represents a higher authority. And, and Paul called himself twice, uh, called himself an ambassador because he knew that when he proclaimed the gospel facts and promises and urged sinners to receive the Reconciliation affected at Calvary. He was declaring Christ's message to the world. And so, uh, and we, we have the most important message that this world needs to hear. And that is the gospel. And, uh, and so we see that uh, 
the, 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 the only uh, way that this world will change and it's only to the power of Jesus Christ. Secondly, the name of Christ is the only way of salvation. And, and, and uh, in verse number 12 in our text, the, the Bible says here that uh, neither is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. And, and, and Peter realized that, that, that the only hope for that, that man that, that all, all of his life, the Bible never told us how long he had been sick or if he was born that way or if he developed some sort of sickness or if he had an accident. Or, or, but we do know that uh, he's been there a long time. And, uh, and Peter said the only hope for that man and the only hope uh, for this world is the gospel because there's, uh, there's no other way. And, um, and w when we look at a, our world today, and there's certainly uh, many people, are, uh, there's so many religions, there's so many things that people are offering, and uh, we know that it's only to the Lord Jesus Christ. The name of Christ is the only way of salvation, and that's, that, that's what what's makes our task so urgent. Because we know that this is the answer, and we hold the answer uh, for this world and this world's problems. And, and that means uh, because the gospel is, or the, because the, 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 the name of Christ uh, is, the, is, the, the, is the only hope of man for eternal life, and we have the answer here, we need to realize that our time is limited. The Bible says in John 9, verse 4, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. Our time is limited. And, uh, and we do know that the, there are many signs and there are many things going on in our world that, that indicates that the Lord indeed is, uh, is coming very soon. And, and uh, we have just a, a little bit of time. I, I, I would encourage each one of us, if there's, you know anyone that you've not shared the gospel yet, to, to uh, keep working on that and, and get the gospel out. Our time is limited uh, but also that the opportunity is at hand. Uh, John 4, verse 35, Jesus said, Say not ye there are yet four months, and then come at harvest. Behold, I say unto you, Lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for they are white, are ready to harvest. And uh, I don't know what it's like here in the United States, but in Canada, uh, we met, uh, one day we were out camping, I think, and we met some nurses they were camping. They were from another place in Canada. They moved to British Columbia to work as nurses. And a uh, long story short, they they were just, they were saying they work they were ER nurses. And and this, this was during uh, maybe mid 2021. And and there, it's interesting that they were saying that in the ER they were admitting more people that have psychological problems because of uh, of, of people having anxiety problems because of uh, of, of the COVID more than the COVID patients themselves. And, uh, and people today are looking for answers. And if there's anything that this whole thing uh, that had happened in the last two years, it revealed how much the, Lord, how much the world needs the gospel of Jesus Christ. And, um, and, our, the, and the opportunity is on hand. And people are asking, and people are wondering, is there hope uh, in this world, really? And in and, uh, and, and, and this this global pandemic brought a lot of fear in a lot of people, and thank the Lord we know as, as believers that God is in control of all of that. But there are many that are wondering. There are many that are, that are grasping for truth and trying different things, and, and, but we have the answer. And also we must realize that there is a great need for more laborers. Uh, in Luke 10, verse 2, Therefore said he unto them, The harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore that the Lord of the harvest, that he would send for uh, laborers into his harvest. And uh, we know that the, there's a great need for laborers. Oh, how we need not, not just missionaries across this world, but, but, but people that would take it seriously to take the gospel message in, in the neighborhoods and, and around this local area. And we need to share uh, what, what God has given us. So the name of Christ gave them our power and our authority. And I'm glad that, you know, when we go and, and knock on doors and when we go and try to share the gospel, we're not, we're not going in our name. We're not going, not even in the name of the church, but the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. But secondly, the name of Christ in verse 13 in our text uh, gave them divine enablement. In verse 13, the Bible says, 
Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, that they marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. And these religious uh, teachers and the authorities and, and the high priests were kind of, they, they, they were kind of troubled and, and wondering what, what is it about this man that gave them so much boldness? I say it's the name of Christ and gives us enablement and, 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 uh, and throughout the scriptures, we see that the Lord Jesus Christ, when he, were, when he was uh, uh, looking for his disciples and, and there, instead of going to the higher education of the day, instead of going to the religious establishments of the day, he went by the seashore and, and, uh, and, and uh, challenged uh, regular fishermen. And, and if you look at the, uh, the, the, uh, the apostles, they were just regular men, fishermen. Some were, uh, some were religious leaders and, and others. And, but uh, but uh, most of it, people, that, there were people that people thought that they could never do anything. But we do know that the, the Bible does say that these men turned the world upside down. And notice in our text, it says that, and, and when they had uh, saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, and, and unlearned just basically means uneducated, and, and the word ignorant man carries the idea of being unknown. So if we read those words together, it gives you, gives you the idea that they were unlearned and then they, nobody knows them from anyone. They, they were not prominent. They, they were basically uh, uneducated nobodies that turned this world upside down. And I'm glad that God can use anybody. God can use any one of us that will be willing to just say, Lord, I'm willing to go. I'm willing to do whatever you want me to do, whether you're young or you're old or whatever abilities you have. I remember as an 18-year-old uh, young man uh, just about to graduate high school there at U Camp um, at, at Camp Yes in, in British Columbia, I, rem- I don't remember who was speaking. I don't remember what the message was, but God just broke my heart to give myself to whatever God wants me to do. But, but I remember talking to my, I went forward, I talked to my camp counselor, and I prayed with him, and I prayed this. I said, Lord, I'm, I'm willing to give my life to you. Just please don't call me to be a preacher. I, will, I, I hated spe- standing up and speaking in front of, the, in front of people. And, and the Lord said, okay, I'll call you to be a missionary then. And so, but you know, God, never limit God. And, and God has, has so much for us. And, and, and the many people that you hear about that God has used, that they're just regular people that were willing to say, Lord, I'm willing to go. And, and the name of Christ enables us to do, to do that and give them divine enablement. And, uh, and there was a young was, there was a young mis- uh, single missionary in Papua New Guinea by the name of Eleanor Young. Eleanor Young, God used her as a single missionary to reach a specific, a specific tribe there in Papua New Guinea. And, and uh, her main project really was to translate the New Testament into their uh, language. And, and their language was not, uh, not a written language. And so she had to you know, learn the language and then come up with an, with a, an alphabet system and, and t- teach them how to read. And it's a long project, but God used her and many other, as part of a team to translate the New Testament. And, and many others, uh, many in, in that tribe uh, accepted the Lord as their Savior because of Eleanor Young. One day when Eleanor Young came home for furlough, she visited the very church uh, that, she, that she grew up in and where she surrendered uh, as, as a young lady to, the, to, to, to missions. And, and, and when she came, nobody that she knew that we're still going to that church. They are either have gone on in glory or some have moved on somewhere else. But there was one uh, elderly gentleman who was a deacon in that church, and he remembered that night that uh, she surrendered uh, to missions. And, and the first thing she told when he saw her, the first thing that he said was this, I, I need to apologize to you. I need to say I'm sorry. And, and Miss Eleanor Young was kind of puzzled why this, why this man was uh, saying that. And he explained, you see, one day when, when the missionary came and uh, uh, there was, there was a, uh, a, spe- a special speaker, a missionary that came and, from China and talked about the needs in, in China and, 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 uh, and only 
one person came forward that night. It was, it was Eleanor. And uh, you see, Eleanor, when, as a young lady, as six years old, she was diagnosed with polio. And uh, there are two types of polio, one that paralyzes you and one that affects your brain that it slowly kills you. She had both, but she survived it, and she still has the effects of it. And, 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 uh, but she, she, she sur survived, survived all of that. When she was young, she had to, um, she had to have those, that, that brace and contraption that, that really just helped her kind of wobble along, uh, along the way. But, but she was very, a very active young, uh, young girl. It didn't really stop her much, but, but, uh, but everywhere she, she, it re completely changed her life. And, and, uh, and that night when that, that missionary uh, spoke and talk, talked about uh, during the invitation how they need more missionaries. Eleanor was the only one that came forward, wobbled herself down to uh, th that across that, that center aisle. And, and that, that deacon said that night, he said, I went to the, 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 uh, the speaker and apologized to him. And I said, and I said this, I, I said, sir, I'm sorry that when you preach and then when you ask for an invitation, only one person came forward, and it's a crippled girl that cannot do anything anyways. And then, and then that, 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 that gentleman said that missionary responded this way with his broken English. He said this, whom God chooses, he uses. And, and here's a, a, a young lady that, that uh, or Eleanor Young, she had to be carried everywhere in Papua New Guinea. She had to hire four men to come up with a contraption and a, and a chair, and they carried her everywhere. She was known as the missionary with bad legs, and God used her. And certainly, God can use anybody that would be willing to, uh, to surrender to him. Lastly, uh, tonight, we see that the name of Christ gave them a power and authority to, to preach and also gave them enable, uh, divine enablement. But notice here uh, in... In verse 20, for we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. The name of Christ gave them boldness to continue. You know, we see here in Acts chapter number 4, it's just a foretaste of the persecution that will happen to the church later on. In fact, if you read about the biographies of, of the apostles, we do know that they paid the ultimate price. And, uh, but here, they were kind of shaken in their, the, the devil was trying to shake their faith, and, and the people here said, you can't speak anymore. We're going to let you go, and we're going to uh, allow you to go, but don't speak of the, the name of Christ anymore. But notice in verse 20 again, for we cannot but speak the things we, which we have seen and heard. And, and you know, again, there will be many opposition. That 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 uh, uh, that will come and 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 there are many times there in Sagada that uh, the the elders, the witch doctors, didn't like the fact that we were there and 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 Godfrey, our pastor, that that the Lord allowed us to uh, that's now pastoring there and allowed us to train. Uh, his grandmother is the top witch doctor in of all of Sagada. She she's the one that they go to and consult. And ask her what what, does, what what is the spirit saying or the 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 the, the, the pagan spirit saying and, and that's what the, the whole city goes by and and so she was not happy when 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 uh, when when Godfrey her own grandson is now the pastor of that church and uh, of course we give God the glory uh, for that but Godfrey faced a lot of persecution and but uh, and and I remember talking to God we we. We, because of that, thankfully technology, we can do videos and so on. And but uh, Godfrey t just told me that uh, just uh, a few months ago, they, they said the elders are afraid. And he said, well, I said, why is that? And and they're upset and they're afraid because one of their own. They, they, he told me, Pastor, they thought when you left, the church was done. When your family left, the church was done. But they were surprised that the church was still going on. And one of their own is pastoring them. That's only the power of God. But there's, there's definitely a lot of persecution. And, and here to, uh, for us today, and uh, there'll be a lot of persecution. There'll be, uh, I wonder today, we see that uh, it gave them boldness to continue. It did not silence them. But I wonder 
uh, today, what would what what would it take to silence us from preaching the gospel, and what what would it take to silence you? It could could be losing your reputation or uh, loneliness and uh, at work. Perhaps you're the only Christian at work, or losing a relationship, or uh, persecution from family, or many other things like personal hurt and disappointments and problems and. But whatever it was here in, in our text, they, they moved on. They continued boldly for Christ. Why? Because it's not about them. It wasn't about John, the Apostle John or Peter or many others that God used mightily. It was about the Lord Jesus Christ, the name of Jesus Christ, the name that we preach, the name above all names, and, uh, and the, the, the name that God has allowed us to carry into the Philippines and the God the name that we preach here, right here locally, uh, as we reach out for pe- the people. So, well, I challenge you tonight, just think about those things, about the authority that we have, and also, God can use anybody, and uh, even me, <laughs> God can use me, God can use anyone, and then also, uh, the name of Christ gives us the courage and the boldness to continue in this dark and, and hard uh, place uh, that we live in, and where, where uh, the name of Christ is being uh, is being made fun of, and and our Christianity is often being questioned. God can give us the boldness to continue. Let's pray, Lord Jesus.